Today I might be a visual artist, a painter, because we're here at the home and studio of Sandra Delbridge in Hopkinton, and we are here to talk about art and why art matters to Sandra and a little about her life uh, otherwise and how it intersects with art for her. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Hi Sandra, thank you for having me here in your studio in Hopkinton. Um, it is eking of creative materials all around us in here. It's just beautiful and exciting. And I, my first question, my eyes want to go in all the different directions of the material. Uh, I am wondering why art for you? What, what is your story connected to all these different mediums for using art in your life? Well, art has always been front and center in my life. I have two girls who went to a art school, and I was thrilled to be able to give them that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But from a young child, I loved creating. Wow. Uh, I had a godmother who would bring a bouquet of flowers to my mother every now and then because she was an avid gardener. And I remember the first time I saw this bouquet come into my parents' home and just being mesmerized by all the colors mm -hmm. and all the textures of the petals mm -hmm. and the different scents. And I thought to myself at a young age, someday I'm going to have a garden. And of course I did. Yes. <laughs> but I love art because it's such a grounding medium for anyone. Mm. If you don't have a hobby and you've never tried art, there are a multitude of types of art you can do, from mm -hmm. photography to painting to quilting to drawing. And if someone says, I can't draw, baloney. Mm -hmm. You can. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's been studies that if you pick up a pencil with your left hand, if you're right-handed, and start to draw, within two weeks you will draw better with your left hand than you will with your right hand if you're wow. right-handed. It's quite amazing. Art takes me into another world, another realm. It brings me peace when I'm stressed. It calms me down. It grounds me as a person. It makes me feel more human. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a wonderful pastime to share, not just with myself, but also with the people who I come in contact with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can't ever have enough of it. And sometimes when I don't get into my studio and I haven't painted or I haven't created cards or haven't done something in a creative way, I get a little frustrated inside mm -hmm. and I can feel my tension building. And I often say to my friends, yeah, I could be like Van Gogh. I could cut my ear off. <laughs> Uh -huh. Because I believe at that point in time, he was so frustrated with his art, hmm. he just was going a little bit insane or uh -huh. crazy. Yeah. So it's, it's really, really a love of mine, and I love sharing it with other people mm -hmm. in any way that I can. Mm -hmm. Recently, I had a friend who was diagnosed again with cancer, and it became what's known as metastatic breast cancer. And I knew she was having a hard time with it. And I called her up and I said, why don't you come over for, for the afternoon? You know, let's, let's do something creative. And she paints herself, but mm -hmm. she couldn't get into her own studio because her head was filled with these horrible thoughts. Sure. So she came and arrived around 11 o'clock, said she was going to leave by 2. Suddenly, it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and she recognizes this on her watch. Mm -hmm. And she goes, oh, my God, this has been so great. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, this is what art does, you know that. Mm -hmm. And it was just wonderful for her because not one second during that time did her head go to that space right. where, you know, what's going to happen to my life now? Mm -hmm. Am I going to see my kids grow up? Am I going to see my daughter get married? She had three, four hours of pure bliss mm -hmm. creating some cards that she could now take home, write a message to someone she loved, and share it with someone else. Mm -hmm. And that's the wonderful thing about art. You start with it here. You put it down, whether it's in a photo or canvas or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you can give it away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like passing it forward in a mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful... Different mm -hmm. ways of giving. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, from the art. Whoa, and we're having uh, creativity Crazy outside. thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> with quite a storm. So yeah. it's nice to be in here with all yeah. this color. Exactly. Um, and I'm very inspired by your words and how you speak of art for yourself as well as a gift for mm -hmm. others and um, please please keep giving that message and I know that you do uh, as you um, 
in, as uh, an advocate of mm -hmm. the arts within mm -hmm. our community. Right, and, right. Uh, I, I love to be creative in a lot of different ways. I've been an avid gardener for almost 30 uh, something years. Mm -hmm. And so anytime there's a fundraiser in town that I've been involved with, whether it was HPTA, whether it was um, the uh, St. John's Church many years ago, I would always volunteer to do any sort of, you know, decorating for the fundraiser and or um, arrangements, floral mm -hmm. arrangements. And I have a multitude of vases to attest to that, mm -hmm. which are in my garage and basement because oftentimes when uh, people do not take them home mm -hmm. or I want the vases back occasionally, I end up bringing them back. And um, again, because I don't want to see them get thrown away. Mm -hmm. So I figure if someone's not going to take the vases then with the flower arrangements, mm -hmm. I want them back so mm -hmm. I can get to reuse them again for another event or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, I love to be creative in so many ways, it's, and my brain is constantly going. Yeah. I have friends say, oh, I wish I could just go in your brain for 10 seconds. Mm. Because every opportunity in life is an opportunity to express art. Mm. If you're going to have a dinner party, yes, you can set your plates and your napkins out lovely. But what about creating that centerpiece that is maybe just a little bit different, mm. you know? Mm. And just a, a, a little example, this past winter I wanted to have a white party. So I asked everyone to come dressed in winter white or white. Mm -hmm. And I did all the table linens in white. And I have white plates, so I put those out. And then I did these beautiful arrangements of white flowers, you know, all mm -hmm. over the place. Mm -hmm. And the only thing on the entire table that had a little bit of color was a green apple. Ah. And that was mm -hmm. the place card holder. I made a little slit mm -hmm. and slid in the white card mm -hmm. that said the person's name, that that's where they should sit. Uh -huh. And it was just so delightful for me to enjoy creating that experience. But what was more delightful was watching the expressions on people's mm -hmm. faces as they walked mm -hmm. in that room yeah. and saw this long table filled with beautiful white flowers all the way down. Mm -hmm. And wow, you yeah. know, and I had white lanterns and little tiny white oh. lights mm -hmm. and white seashells. Everything was wow. white, but it was just lovely. And we had such a great evening. Mm -hmm. So it made an experience for all of them to go home and think about, mm -hmm. you know, and, color and, and maybe, and maybe they'll go home and do a, a fun dinner party mm -hmm. now with some theme in their mind. Yes. Well, that is uh, very inspiring to think about, uh, uh, myself not being, uh, that, uh, familiar, I guess, with, uh, thinking of how to bring beauty, uh, into daily life, mm -hmm. but knowing, how important beauty is to our world in the natural world as well Absolutely. as our dwellings Absolutely. historically throughout time, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. How it actually helps us to be happier, peaceful beings. To be I always beauty. say you can go to a sporting event mm -hmm. and have a great time, mm -hmm. but someone's going to walk away sad because only one team is going to win. Mm -hmm. But you can go to an art event, mm -hmm. whether it's a museum mm -hmm. or a play or a concert, and you're going to walk away 99% of the time mm -hmm. with a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. And you're going to feel good. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel just ecstatic. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just going to feel great. And that's what art does for us. Mm -hmm. You know, it just gives mm -hmm. us a lift yeah. in this mm -hmm. world that we live in, which is beautiful, but unfortunately, it has stress. Mm -hmm. And some people would say it's even more stress now with all the whole political scene. But I try not to focus on that. Instead, mm -hmm. I try to focus on the good things, mm -hmm. the beauty, and art, mm -hmm. and what it can do, mm -hmm. not just for me, but for other people as well. Right, for community. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Right. So, well, I wonder if maybe you could um, think about bringing art and sports, uh, <laughs> athletics uh, together. Well, There's you know, it's interesting. NFL. <laughs> when, when we're at our summer place, um, we often do a what we call the Olympics. So it's a play on words because uh, the Cape houses often have names, you know, mm -hmm. they might call it sea breeze or sea glass or, mm -hmm. you know, salt marsh or whatever. And our house happens to be called Cape Kahuna. Uh -huh. And it's just sort of a family fun little thing because mm -hmm. we went to Hawaii when my children were young mm -hmm. and they heard this guy call him the Kahuna God and they said, Daddy, who's the Kahuna? And he goes, I am. I'm the big Kahuna. I'm the gods of all gods. <laughs> Playfully, of course. Uh -huh. So it kind of stuck so. with him. <laughs> so we do this fun thing where we create a series of sporting, little sporting events throughout the day mm -hmm. and we create teams uh -huh. and it's like our own little Olympics and mm -hmm. we give out 
the gold and the silver and the bronze medal. Uh -huh. And it's just a blast. Mm -hmm. And it does involve some sporting things, mm -hmm. but sometimes just crazy things too, like jumping through hula hoops and picking up as many balls uh -huh. as you can and you know dropping them into a bucket. Uh -huh. But it's a sporting event, but it's also creative art because mm -hmm. I create that obstacle course, whatever uh -huh. it is. Mm -hmm. And the kids just love it. So mm -hmm. oh, it can great. be combined in a, in a small way. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, maybe <laughs> next step, you know, NFL. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Bring some beauty over there, too. Yeah. But I know this, uh, uh, I am intrigued by your story from youth of being inspired by the bouquet of flowers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, there must be some uh, path of that for you to keep you close to art through the years to the work that you eventually right, right. did. Right. Well, every, you... every opportunity that I get. I um, love to go to museums. I love to go to art shows. I love to go to even local fairs. Mm -hmm. I think our juried art show here in town at the Hopkins Center for the Arts mm -hmm. is one of the nicest little art shows you can go to and you can pick up some great art mm -hmm. at reasonable prices because you know sometimes it can be very expensive and not everyone can afford it. Um, and I like to support the local community as much as I can. Um, my husband and I have been big philanthropists here. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't like to necessarily focus just on that. I like to focus on giving back in other ways, mm -hmm. um, which is why I will do you know, things for uh, fundraisers and, and so forth. But every opportunity that I get to enjoy some form of art, I take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, recently I went to the um, grounds of the Highfield Hall on, in Falmouth, which is a, a old home that's been restored mm -hmm. and they have sculptural art on the grounds right now and it's just delightful to walk around and mm -hmm. see all of that and they always do no, some form some form of outdoor sculpture show or mm -hmm. uh, last two years ago they did yarn they had community knitters and everybody knitted scarves mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. that would go around the diameter of the trees Wow. And some were multi-striped, some were gradations where they might start from a soft yellow to a deeper, deeper until it gets mm -hmm. to mustard, you know, so it's a gradation of color. And some of the women made doilies, mm -hmm. crochet doilies, mm -hmm. and they covered them over large rocks. Mm -hmm. And they looked like lace on the rocks. Wow. They were, it was just outstanding. Mm -hmm. It was such an interesting thing to see. Mm -hmm. um, so any opportunity that I get to visit and mm -hmm. explore um, my own creative process, so that's how you keep yourself fueled. And how about uh, your work in uh, getting involved in design? Well, how did that get started for you? In design, it basically got started because I didn't get into nursing, so I had to do something. Mm -hmm. And interior design seemed like an interesting option. So I went to design school, fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. And I worked um, commercially first. I mm -hmm. worked for Milton Bradley Corporation as their corporate designer. And then shortly mm -hmm. thereafter, um, of course, I started a family. Mm -hmm. So I was working part-time for them. And then I left them and went to work for a smaller firm, doing more commercial, some residential, and eventually said, you know what? I could do this for myself and mm -hmm. call my own hours so I can be home with my babies when I needed to be home. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's when I started my own firm. And I kept that up for a while. But at the same time, I never left my true art sense because I had an art gallery as well. Wow. but it was in Western Mass, mm -hmm. and that was called Art in Place. Mm -hmm. And basically what I would do is outfit the interiors that I was working on with the art as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was a great way for me to sort of complete mm -hmm. the, the whole picture mm -hmm. for a client, you know, because you can get the office furniture in or do a restaurant or, you know, do a private home, but the thing that really makes it speak is the personalities of the people that live there. Mm -hmm. And the way you draw that out is what is it that they like? You know, mm -hmm. what are their hobbies? What are their interests? And um, and you create art through that. You know, mm -hmm. if they're into baseball, you know, you might get a signed jersey and hang it in mm -hmm. a man's office. You know, that's art. Or you might find art out there that they would enjoy. You know, that's of their interest. If they're a naturalist and they go outside and they like to camp and all that, hmm. you may find some art that shows mountains and lakes and streams. Mm -hmm. You know, and it develops the personality. So Personalized. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Wow. And uh, do you uh, show this? Do you have a website that shows I don't the have work a website. No, done? no. No, because yeah. I retired about mm, six, seven years ago. Ah, okay. So well, I'm no longer really doing interiors anymore. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm doing is playing. Good. I get to play with my crayons and my pencils and my paints. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I see uh, by the looks you're creating some paintings. Yes. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, that are waiting for their next place, perhaps. Right. And I wonder uh, if you could make an artist out of me in two minutes. Uh, well, if I, I can, can try. Play, at least. <laughs> I can try. So this is a, a board. It's just a, a painted board. You can do paint on anything from canvas to board to fabric. And I like to play with palette knives. So these are two different palette knives. This one has a rounded top. This has a pointed top. So you can kind of stipple and do different things. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, when you're painting, you're just taking colorant. And the more you put on it, the more you're going to get. And then it's almost like frosting a cake. Mm -hmm. It sort of feels like buttercream, you know, spreading. And the more you play with it, and the more paint you put on it, you can create uh, heavily textured mm, sort of... Yeah you know, things. Mm -hmm. Now this is acrylic paint, which dries fairly quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do that for a few minutes and let that, let that yeah, stay like that. Great texture. Yeah, it's very great. It, it almost, I think it looks like frosting. Mm -hmm. I love playing with paint this mm -hmm. way. I really mm -hmm. do. Now, if I were to let that dry thoroughly and then took another color and dry brushed it, and basically dry brushing means that you are taking a brush, you're not putting any water to it at all. Mm -hmm. You're just okay. putting a little bit of paint and you swish over that. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is all those ridges that you see mm -hmm. from the palette knife will pick up more of the colorant than anything else. Mm -hmm. And then you get a textural feel. Um, the painting behind you, I've done that. Oh, yeah. There's, so there's been, there's been um, palette knife work mm -hmm. as well as uh, dry brush work. Mm -hmm. So that's basically you know, two ways that you can um, discover you know, palette knife. And then you can mm -hmm. add. Oh yeah, look at that color. Yeah. And, and if you want, you can drag it like this. So you let some of the white space show up. Where, we, where do you get your direction as you're doing this to decide? You know, leave white sometime, space and... sometimes I just go with what my feelings are. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I want to try and create, you know, some sort of imagery in my head. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of some sort of imagery and sometimes it just appears mm -hmm. and sometimes it doesn't appear at all and you're struggling and then you're saying, oh my God, what have I just done? I've made a mess. But you know what I do? Paint it out white and start again. Uh. I never feel like whatever I've done is a total mistake because you can always, you know, add to it or cover mm -hmm. it over, like I said, and start again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had a... A nice story about that earlier. Right. About... Then you can do things like this where you can draw into the space. Yeah. Spreading it, you know, the paint out. Mm -hmm. You don't have enough on there to really show too much, but. Let's put another little color on there and see what happens. Would you say? For you as an artist that you ha are inspired by a concept, an idea before you get started? And Sometimes I'm inspired just by photos or pictures that yeah. I've taken mm -hmm. or places that I've traveled um, and, you know, taken photos. Sometimes I'm inspired by, like, I will pick up cards, postcards mm -hmm. of different artists. Um, and while I don't necessarily like that imagery, mm -hmm. I love the placement of color. Mm, I love blue, the bright especially. blue against the yeah. orange, which is mm -hmm. complementary. I love the yellow, mm -hmm. the lavenders, you know, and it goes yes. off into pinks. Mm -hmm. So I will take something like this and take a flat canvas and just start painting mm -hmm. using those four or five colors mm -hmm. to create, mm -hmm. not knowing where it's going to go. Right. Trusting the process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because art's a journey. Mm -hmm. You never know where it's going to land. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. just go and you explore and you have fun. And in your process of having fun, you're going to discover things. Mm -hmm. You're going to discover whether you have a heavy hand or a light hand. Mm -hmm. This f good friend of mine who loves to paint, she has a heavy hand. Mm -hmm. She can break a paintbrush wow. because she pushes so wow. hard. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. I know. I don't. And she'll often mm -hmm. say to me, how did you get that? Mm -hmm. And I'll say, lightly, mm -hmm. lightly, you know. Rather than going hard, if you go just lightly with the brush, you'll get a different texture. Hmm. It's pretty, pretty amazing. May yeah. I try a stroke? Can Absolutely. You, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just on top of yeah, yours. Yeah. And, Take whatever you right, want. And yeah. uh, how, how shall you guide me? You, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I think you need to do it yourself. I can't okay. really tell you. Okay. Excuse me. Um, this I, is different. Not a paintbrush. No. But, no. Uh, with yeah. The, like a knife. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, it feels It feels, it feels nice. yummy, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And... <laughs> And now I'm um, overlapping with your color yep, and yep. playing around yep, with that. Exactly. And uh, 
I, I, fe I see how it feels good, um, tactile wise, mm -hmm. uh, but also I do feel peaceful. Um, it's very calming. Playing around with because it. what happens is while you're working with art, whether it's paint, like I said, any other kind of medium, mm -hmm. your mind is so concentrated on that journey you're taking mm -hmm. that a calmness comes over you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to explain it, but it's a wonderful feeling of just pure joy mm -hmm. and expression. Yeah. Um, so I, I value that my background is in psychology. Ah, okay. And uh, it sounds like you're talking about the practice of mindfulness that we talk about. It a really lot is. These days, it really shutting is. Shutting off the rational, mm -hmm. critical, sometimes screaming mind. And, right. And diving into beauty and, and peace of uh, making something, uh, creating something. So thank you. Uh, I enjoyed that experience. You're welcome. And you're welcome. I know the time goes by fast here, but. Um, you also are interested in writing because uh, I read your article recently, mm -hmm. um, and that was in the... Hopkinton Living magazine. Yes, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. right. And uh, I was impressed by both your writing and the topic of right. writing about writing. Can you talk a little bit right, why you right. did that? Well, one of the reasons why I do it is because, unfortunately, the art of writing is becoming a lost mm -hmm. pastime. Um, for centuries, people wrote letters and diaries and journals. Mm -hmm. And there are still people out there that do that, but it's getting fewer and fewer and fewer. And I think that's a sad thought because when we write a letter or a note, it's different from doing an email. Have you ever written an email and then that person call you up upset because they said it sounded negative? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what stroking of the keys does that's mm -hmm. different from writing with a pen, mm -hmm. But for some reason, when you write something out with a pen, mm -hmm. the connotations and the meanings are mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. And who wants to go to their mailbox and get junk mail? Mm -hmm. What a wonderful thing to go to the mailbox and find a card mm -hmm. from someone you haven't heard from, mm -hmm. or even someone that you care about, and open it up. That is like mm -hmm. pure joy to me. Yeah. It's like a little mm -hmm. teeny gift given in an unexpected moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, again, the same friend who's going through uh, illness. Mm -hmm. I've been sending her cards just to cheer her up. Mm -hmm. And one of the cards I found recently, I just loved. It said, we've had wonderful shared experiences. And then when you open it up, it says, even buying our boots on the Nordstrom sale rack. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just a hoot, you know? Very specific. <laughs> because, because it would make her laugh. It yeah, would make sure. her smile. It would uh -huh. make her think someone cares, yes. someone loves. Yeah. Hallmark has it, says it best, right? Oh. <laughs> but I find that writing has become a lost art. Yeah. I write journals to my daughter still. Wow. I write what a gift that is. notes to my husband when he's mm -hmm. been traveling. Mm. Sometimes I'll just lay a little note on his pillow. Mm. I remember one time my youngest daughter wanted to go away skiing, and I was always a big proponent of whatever you get to do, you send a thank you to whoever has allowed you to do that. Mm -hmm. Or if they've given you a gift, you send a thank you. So we came home one late one night, and she had already gotten in. We gave her the opportunity to go and ski up in Vermont for three days with her friends, and it was a birthday gift for her. And so, and we used to ski a lot, but we had stopped skiing due to arthritis and age and all that anyways. And so we come home and there's a little note on our pillow from her. And she said, mom and dad, I just want to say how grateful I am hmm. that you gave me the opportunity to go away, that you trusted me at 18 to do this with my friends. We had such a good time. She says, but I will say that every time I came down the mountain, she looked back for us. Wow. Because she remembered those good times. Mm. Wow, that's beautiful. Those little simple writing passages mm -hmm. are so important to our mm -hmm. humanness in life. Mm -hmm. I apologize for getting that's a little. All right. but yeah, that's But that's how, that's how emotional mm -hmm. I am about passing on the written word. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a cookbook I found recently of my mother's, and it wasn't one of hers. Mm -hmm. It was just the Church Gills cookbook that they did on Italian cooking. And when I opened it up, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to throw this out. I don't really need it. You know, I don't really cook that much. And I like Italian cooking, but I'm, you know, I'm a decent cook. Not great. <laughs> I saw my mother's writing at the top. Oh. I couldn't throw it away. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I have it. Mm 
But I keep thinking, I'm not going to keep the whole cookbook, but what I am going to do is I'm going to start incorporating some of the recipes into a multi-collage piece of artwork, Ooh, which wow. I think will be really fun. And meaningful. And right? meaningful. So then I'll have it in a more special way, mm. you know. Wow, exciting. But I feel like you cannot uh, encourage writing enough. I think it's just a wonderful pastime, and I think it means a lot to people who don't really get it. Right. And I think yeah. they do get it, but a lot of people don't get it because they don't do it enough. And I think that we need to do it more. Yeah. Well, and I it really is a lost keep that, art. Keep that talk up uh, yeah, for my own personal interest, but we're yeah. almost out of time. We have okay. about a minute left. Uh, and I uh, appreciate and admire how you have been bring, bring, showing us, teaching us how you bring beauty and peace and joy into the world through community, through your family, mm -hmm. uh, through the work you do, and the play of creativity and art. Uh, for you, I had, uh, what is uh, next on your bucket list of life, if you would say that? Well, I have always wanted to write a book, and I actually oh. wrote two children's books a while back, but never took them to that full, and I need to do that. And the funny thing is, the first one that I wrote, I was probably in my early 30s, and it's so apropos for this time because I called it uh, Alexander the Great, Alexandria the Great, it was about a little girl, and basically the story was, it's okay to be you, mm -hmm. which well, I think is so important. And I think the reason I wrote it was because I remembered seeing bullying in school, or mm -hmm. maybe not so much bullying, but acts of unkindness towards mm -hmm. a particular girl. And I remember standing up for her and holding her hand in line when no one else wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to express that it was that it was better to be you than to, mm -hmm. you know, do something that was going to hurt a person. Mm -hmm. And I just really wanted to write that whole series where, you know, each book describes something about a child that was okay to do mm -hmm. and that they could feel good about themselves and be proud of who they were. Um, wow. So that's one of the things that I've been saying I've, I've got to get back to. I have the manuscript. I've never sent it forward. You know, I need to find an illustrator because I want it illustrated, not my kind of art. Okay. Um, well, I say go for it. <laughs> yeah.